Senator Diane Attlee. Thank you, Mr Acting President. Um, I'm very, very pleased to rise in support of this bill today. Uh, I support the bill because it's good policy, it's uh, prudent policy, and it also happens to be uh, popular with the vast majority of the Australian community. Uh, the bill gives uh, farmers the right to refuse a miner's permission to extract coal seam gas on their properties. Uh, as it stands, farmers who grow the food we eat and export uh, this food uh, do not have this right. When it comes to facing down the miners who want to move in, dig up their property and extract what's underneath, farmers hardly have any rights at all. Uh, we do think that they should have the right to preserve the lands under their care from a potentially devastating industry. Now, it's true that uh, the minerals under their properties are public property. Uh, this bill does not, of course, change that fact. It doesn't seek to create a precedent. Uh, but in our mad scramble to exploit the supposed riches of coal seam gas, we're taking some, uh, some very, very dangerous risks with one of our uh, country's most precious resources, and that is this nation's farmlands. Uh, if things are left to the mining industry, the methane under our farmlands will be extracted and sold as quickly as possible. Uh, preserving our most fertile land for the future will be less than an afterthought. Uh, given what we know about the risks of coal seam gas extraction, this is reckless and premature. This bill does nothing more than add a note of caution to the debate. Um, in terms of uh, our food production, this bill is aimed at protecting uh, agricultural land and our environment. In particular, it's aimed at preserving our best quality farming land. Now, farming is important in terms of uh, Australia's economy, but it's also important uh, in terms of the Australian tradition. Despite being a highly urbanised country, our farmers rightly hold a special place in the Australian consciousness. This nation was built on the back of our farmers and our agricultural resources. It remains an important sector of the economy and an important part of our national identity. Uh, we're extremely lucky in this country to have access to such a bounty of high quality fresh food. Uh, over 90 per cent of what we eat is grown here. We have food security. Uh, food security uh, is getting a bit of press, uh, has had a bit of press recently, but we do take it for granted. But it is becoming an issue of increasing urgency. Only a tiny proportion of this country uh, has, is, is made up of high quality farmland. We don't have any farmland to spare. So no populist campaign of dam building is going to change that. Therefore, our best land should not be foolishly uh, used for short-term gain. Now, unlike what Senator Bishop was suggesting, this bill only applies to land that has been used in the last 10 years for producing food that Australians eat and that we, and that we export to the rest of the world. Uh, with the UN now projecting that global food production needs to rise by about 70 per cent, to the middle, uh, by the middle of, uh, of the next century, safeguarding food producing land should be one of our highest priorities. Uh, coal seam gas extraction uses billions of litres of water. Uh, it competes with agriculture for this precious resource, and we have not had the debate that says that mining should win out in this current argument. Now, mining is, of course, very important for our country and for our economic prosperity. Uh, we are not an anti-mining party. We understand that the world needs our resources and that Australia can provide them. But the Greens are the party of long-term thinking. You can only dig up minerals or gas. You can only dig them up once. What happens then? What does the future look like? This is particularly important when it comes to this industry, when it comes to coal seam gas. Uh, once we've uh, extracted and sold the gas, once the miners have left our properties, um, what does the land look like? Is it still fit for growing food? Um, we haven't done a complete analysis of the risks associated with this industry. 
And let me name a few here. Of course, there is the significant risk of groundwater contamination. Uh, we know that uh, some coal seams uh, connect with the water table. Uh, we know that the associated uh, uh, water that's produced as a byproduct is often polluted uh, with some dangerous chemicals, some of which I will refer to shortly. We know that these, uh, this byproduct often lies in evaporation ponds and risks leaking into rivers and becoming part of our potable water supply. Uh, we know that there are some real concerns about whether this industry is in fact uh, helping us to make the transition away from high emissions uh, industries, particularly when one considers the potent nature of uh, methane as a greenhouse gas, that the uh, footprint of this industry has been largely understated when we take a full life cycle analysis into account. We know that there are problems with leakage, um, with compression uh, for export. We do need more independent analysis. We need to see uh, Australian studies on this industry independent of uh, industry uh, propaganda. Uh, and it's unnecessary. Uh, we don't need it now, especially from prime agricultural land. Uh, we know that there are alternative sources of energy. Uh, as a, I suppose as a, as a medical professional, I want to sp uh, spend a, a moment or two to focus on the health impacts of this industry. Um, most people would, uh, of course, be very protective of any industry that, ca that may cause the potential health impacts associated with the mining of coal seam gas. Uh, we don't know enough about what those impacts uh, are at the moment. We know that only four of the 60 fracking chemicals have been assessed as safe by NICNAS, the National Chemicals Regulator. Uh, but we do know that there's very good reason to think that some of these chemicals will have very serious health impacts. Uh, when we look at the hundreds of uh, different chemicals used in the extraction process, in particular there's been some focus on the uh, BTEX group of chemicals, benzene, toluene, uh, ethyl benzene and xylenes. Now, uh, these are the same products that are found in cigarette smoke. Uh, they're the same products uh, that are found in uh, pollution, uh, in exhaust pollution from motor vehicles. We know that they cause a range of health, health impacts. We know that some of them are potent carcinogens, uh, and we know that they affect a number of the body's uh, systems, including our nervous system and circulatory system. So there's some real concerns about the impacts of the chemicals used in this process. Uh, we know that they uh, leave a lasting legacy. Uh, they have uh, uh, the potential to contaminate billions of litres of water through the process. And, uh, and I'm really concerned that we have not got uh, enough information to be able to say that this industry is safe and that we can safeguard against the potential health impacts on the Australian community. Um, the potential for these chemicals to get into drinking and irrigation water supplies is significant, uh, and we simply don't understand their impact on human health. Uh, we do, in this instance, need to use the precautionary principles, and until the toxicity profiles of all of these chemicals, and in particular the BTEX group of chemicals, are clearly understood, why on earth would we take the chance with one of our most precious resources, and that is our groundwater. Uh, of course, there's a, there's a risk that the chemicals from the coal seams themselves, so this is the chemicals that lie dormant within these seams, will in fact be brought to the surf surface and enter the water supply and our food chain. Uh, we know that there's a number of volatile organic compounds that exist uh, within these coal seams and that they do have the potential to cause cancer and other teratogenic effects. Uh, we also know that the underground channels by which a coal seam might link to an aquifer are complex, and we do need to make sure that we get more evidence, that we have a greater understanding of the impacts of these chemicals and their use before we jump headlong into the coal seam gas gold rush. Uh, given the potential uh, for damage to human health, 
Uh, we do think that one of the things that's been lacking in this debate has been the involvement of the public health community and public health experts as part of this process. And I do refer to publications uh, in the uh, Medical Journal of Australia, which indicate some of the concerns expressed by the medical community uh, when it comes to coal seam gas. What's important is that when we do plan um, for uh, proposals such as this, no proposal should go ahead without a complete consideration of the public health ramifications of this industry, and none should operate without, the, without strict and rigorous monitoring of uh, the full impacts of the industry. I mean, prevention is much, much more sensible than cure. Uh, let's apply that principle not just to our health system, but let's apply it to this debate around coal seam gas mining. Uh, uh, Mr Acting uh, President, I'd like to uh, say a few things about my home state in Victoria. Uh, now, while this debate has largely focused around the states of Queensland and New South Wales, uh, Victoria is now the next target in the coal seam gas battle. Uh, in Victoria, over 30 applications have been received for exploration of coal seam gas mining, and a number of these are exclusively for uh, coal seam gas. It's of great concern to me and to many Victorians. Uh, we in Victoria have some of the nation's most productive farmland. Uh, for example, uh, Victoria produces two-thirds of this country's milk. We have a dairy industry that's worth approximately $2 billion in exports. Um, the Victorian public is now very, very alarmed uh, by the coal seam gas gold rush. Uh, it's clear that um, in, uh, in my own local community, uh, in the region of Colac and south of Colac, uh, there is growing anxiety about an exploration permit that's been granted now to ECI International. Uh, at a community meeting that was held in the town of Forest last Friday, in uh, the wonderful uh, Otway Ranges, um, my, own, uh, my own place of residence, we saw almost 100 residents uh, attend a community meeting who were particularly concerned about the impact of coal seam gas mining on groundwater. Uh, in other areas, we've seen uh, issues with uh, um, uh, areas such as the ovens in King Valley, who were, who were very strongly opposed um, uh, to, this, uh, to the possibility of coal seam gas uh, exploration licences. And in fact, the city of Wangaratta also expressed uh, that view. Um, an exploration licence for uh, a, a, an area near the town of Warrnambool was withdrawn after significant community opposition. We know that that story is a story that's consistent with uh, what's happening right across uh, the country. Uh, the Galaxy poll that indicated that 68 per cent of Australians uh, do not support a moratorium uh, uh, sorry do support a moratorium in cold seam gas until the full health and environmental impacts are understood. We know that that's how the Australian community feel. In fact, this bill doesn't even go that far. All it says is that farmers should have a say and that, uh, um, disappointingly, uh, this wasn't reflected by the old parties who voted down the Greens' motion for a moratorium in coal seam gas just last week. Uh, their position is out of step with the position of the majority of the Australian community. Uh, in conclusion, I, I think uh, the passage of this bill, Senator Waters' bill, is nothing more than uh, a nod to caution and good sense. Uh, it doesn't ban coal seam gas mining. It just simply taps on the brakes and says, look, we don't know enough about this industry, its impact on agriculture, its impact on human health. Um, let's make sure we get a much fuller picture around what those impacts are before we rush headlong into this industry. Uh, I am proudly stand here in support of the bill. Uh, I think if we don't support it, we do risk uh, damaging human health. Uh, we do risk long-term damage to our groundwater and to our farmland. And, um, and for that reason, I am very, very proudly uh, standing here in support of this bill.